Hey, this is Keith, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do some title design with Helium, a plugin for Adobe After Effects that provides 3D tools allowing users to easily create 3D animations. Click on the links in the description below to either download a trial of the plugin or watch videos that will give you an overview of Helium's capabilities. Recently, I've been exploring Helium. It caught my interest as it appeared to have functionality similar to Element 3D from Video Copilot. In the future, I might make a video taking a deeper dive into Helium and share my thoughts as a longtime Element 3D user. It's not hard to make comparisons after all. But for now, I'm just going to focus on how I use Helium's Extrude tools to create a title design for a Star Wars fan short I'm working on called BB-7. This tutorial assumes familiarity with After Effects, and I'm using Helium version 6, the latest version of Helium as I'm recording. First, I created a 1920 by 1080 comp and named it Title. Next, I used the text tool to type in my title, BB7. If you're interested, the font I'm using is Good Times Heavy, and it's available from Adobe Fonts. I centered the text in the comp and then scaled it until it filled the comp. Now you don't have to scale the text that large. When you apply Helium's Extrude effect to make the text 3D, it will be the same size as your original text, and you can easily adjust the size of the 3D text using the tools Helium provides. But in my case, I wanted to create a custom texture map with some rust-like color painted around the edges of the 3D text. And for the texture to map correctly, I found this to be a necessary step. Since I planned to create my texture within Photoshop, I went to Composition, Save Frame As, Photoshop Layers, and saved the title.psd file to my Assets folder. But before I created the texture, I built my 3D title. First, I created a solid and went to Effect, Helium, Add Helium Effects. When the Select Preset window popped up, I scrolled down to the Extrude Presets. There are several to choose from. More if you double-click here. In my case, I didn't intend to use the built-in animation or bevel, so I just picked this one. As you can see, the Extrude Preset added its own text layer as its source. So I went to the Effect Controls to set the path layer to BB7. Then I turned off the animation and made the BB7 layer invisible. Before I continue, I want to point out one of the features I really like about Helium, and that's how when you use a preset, the plugin automatically creates a light, camera, and a null that's linked to your extrude effect. To me, this is a great time saver. You could choose Effect, Helium, Extrude, and bypass the presets, but then you'd have to set up a light, camera, and null on your own. Sort of like you would need to do with Element 3D, which is fine, especially as you get more experience with the plugin and working in 3D. But it sure makes things a lot easier to have a basic scene complete with camera, light, source text, and null linked to your 3D text all ready for you to work with. So point to Helium. My next step was to rename the Helium generated null, Fill Null. Delete the Helium generated text layer and rename the solid I applied the Helium effect to, Helium FX. Using the Helium generated null, you can change the position of your 3D text or rotate it. To increase or decrease the 3D text size, just use the null's scale control. In my case, I didn't want to change the position, rotation, or scaling yet, since I was going to add another extrude effect to the effects stack. So I used After Effects camera tools to pull the camera back a little to give me some room to work. Next, I went back to the Helium effect controls and changed the name of the extrude effect layer to Fill. I set the bevel to zero and kept the depth of the extrude at 60. I also changed the color of the fill to a color that will resemble my final texture to make it stand out from the edge I created next. In the effect controls, I clicked on the plus icon to add a new helium effect. This brought up the select preset window. I scrolled down to extrude and picked the same preset I did earlier. I renamed the new extrude effect layer, Edge, set the path layer to BB7, and turned off the animation. A new null was generated, linking it to the Edge effect layer. I changed the name of this null to Edge Null and moved it above the Fill Null. Next, I clicked on Edit within the Edge effect layer to open the Select Preset window where I could pick a beveled edge preset. There are several to choose from, and more presets will be added over time according to Helium's creator. One clear advantage Element 3D has over Helium at the moment is the ability to dial in a look for a bevel with many more controls. But in my case, I found a preset that suited me just fine, Edge 03. 
I increased the bevel to 150 and increased the depth to 90. Then, using the edge null, I nudged the edge forward a little until I could see the entire bevel. Now I was ready to apply my custom texture maps. For this project, I built my custom textures within Photoshop. Now I'm not going into details as there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to create textures with Photoshop. But for the fill, you can see here how I blended various assets from my library and used layer masks to paint the rusty edge around the text. Then I used adjustment layers to prep roughness and metalness maps. I also built a custom texture for the edge. Back in After Effects, I imported the texture maps and placed them within my comp below the helium effects layer and made them invisible. Since I wanted to be able to adjust the roughness and metalness textures to dial in a look, I pre-composed those layers. I applied textures to the fill first. I went to Helium's effect controls and under fill, twirled down the properties. Then I clicked on the expand materials icon so I could create a custom material using my textures. I moved the material effect layer above the edge layer and renamed it fill material. If I didn't move the fill material above the edge layer, it would have affected the edge too. Next, I set the texture to my fill color map, set the roughness and metalness to 100, and set the roughness texture to my fill roughness map and the metalness texture to my fill metalness map. Within the pre-comps for the fill roughness and metalness textures, I used a level effect to dial in a look for the fill. For the edge, I repeated what I did with the fill, twirling down the properties and clicking on the expand materials icon, changing the name of material to edge material, adding my texture maps, and being sure to set roughness and metalness to 100. In the pre-comp for the edge metalness map, I added a levels effect to dial in a look for the edge. I kept the roughness map the same. I wanted the edge texture to have finer detail, so I went to the edge effect layer's properties and changed texture repeat X to 2.0. I was done with the textures. Next, I adjusted lights and environment. I changed the helium generated point light to a parallel light and turned on cast shadow. If you want your light to cast shadows on your 3D text, your light should either be a spot or parallel light. Next, I moved the light to the right and above the 3D text and made sure the point of interest pointed at the center of the text. I added a spotlight directly behind and above the text to act as a rim light, setting the intensity to 25% and turning off shadows. I just wanted to create some specular highlights, not create any additional shadows. A note on using spotlights with casting shadows turned on. It's been recommended to me by Helium's creator to reduce the cone angle as much as possible to encompass only the object you are lighting. The more the cone fits in the needed area, the better quality shadows you'll get. The cone angle should not exceed 90 degrees. Next, I added an environment map to add reflections and environment lighting. I clicked on the Edit Environment icon in one of the effect layers. Didn't matter which one since the map would affect the entire scene. This opened up the select preset window with several environment presets to choose from. In my case, I decided to use an environment map that came with Element 3D called Basic 2K01 that I imported into the project and placed at the bottom of the comp. To use that map, I went to the Choose Environment window, clicked on Comp Layer, and chose Basic 2K01. I clicked on the Edit Environment icon again so I could adjust the shadow effect. This controls how much the environment is affected by the comp's lights and cast shadows, giving a more soft or hard look. For this project, I chose high. Next, I made sure my render settings were set to the highest quality possible. I clicked the render settings icon to bring up the render settings window and chose higher from the drop down menu. For the background, in a separate comp, I created a star field using a fractal noise, exposure, and fast box blur effect. Then I used that star field as an illumination map within Video Copilot's Orb plugin to create a 360 degree background. I provided a link to this free plugin in the description below. Next, using an adjustment layer, I added some color correction using Lumetri 
and a little stylization with a fast box blur and unsharp mask effect. Finally, I animated my camera to orbit around my 3D text. And I was done, for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it informative. Helium is a great plugin with a lot of potential, especially for motion designers and VFX artists looking to add 3D to their projects without having to dive into dedicated 3D software like Cinema 4D or Blender, or you want a tool that is simpler or less expensive than Element 3D. I plan to explore this plugin further in the future and will post tutorials or breakdowns as I do. Also, if you are so inclined, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. In addition to more Helium related content, I will also be documenting my journey creating this, for me, very ambitious Star Wars short starring BB-7, a cousin of a certain attention-hogging droid who gets all the credit. See you soon.